On November 10, 2005, Walsh Construction was awarded the I-355 Displains River Bridge Project, issued by the Illinois State Toll Highway Authority. The contract is the largest of 10 contracts comprising the Toll Authority's $738 million Interstate I-355 South Extension Corridor Improvement Plan. This extension will link the I-55 Stevenson Expressway on the north to Interstate I-80 on the south, an approximately 14-mile stretch of highway through Illinois' Cook and Will counties. The 6,600-foot-long Desplaines River Bridge spans three rivers, two railroads, three roadways, and will carry six lanes of Interstate I-355 traffic over the town of Lamont, Illinois. Most of the bridge is about 80 foot in the air. Uh, it goes from a, a one bluff line to another, which kind of stays up out of the way of all the residential traffic, uh, the local traffic, uh, the railroad tracks, shipping canal. Uh, it goes across a wetland area. About a well, third of the bridge goes through a, what they call pristine wetland. Uh, they've had some, there's some endangered species that, that lives there, the dragonfly, uh, Blanding's turtle. So it's kind of a unique job the way it goes right through that area without very much disturbance. To create each of the 34 piers for the bridge, four caissons are drilled from the existing grade into rock. These caissons are typically 78 inches in diameter and vary in length from 15 to 80 feet. Each also requires rock sockets ranging from 4.5 to 15 feet in depth. Next, four six-foot diameter columns were poured for each pier. Depending on the terrain, these columns vary in height from 12 to 75 feet. Instead of using guy wires to support the rebar cage, it was set by a crane simultaneously with the column form. Once in place, a work platform was set at the top of two side-by-side -side columns to provide support and access for the pour. Once the columns are complete, the pier caps are formed and poured. The pier caps are 125 feet in length, 6.5 feet in width, and vary from 5.5 to 7 feet high. The caps require two stages of post-tensioning to a stress level of 2,700 to 3,600 kips in order to carry the superstructure load. Shoring towers are now erected between the piers. The towers are designed and constructed to allow them to be pulled laterally from the northbound bridge to the southbound bridge in order to save erection and dismantling costs. With the shoring towers in place, the precast beam pier segments are then erected. The girders vary in length from 103 feet to 170 feet and from 185,000 to 250,000 pounds in weight. Due to the immense size, two cranes are used to place the girders atop the pier caps. Next, the drop-in beam segments are erected. Strong backs are used to temporarily support the drop-ins atop the pier segments. Once these drop-in beam segments are in place, the post-tensioning ducts are connected between the beams and the closure area between the segments is formed and concrete is poured. At this point, the first stage of the post-tensioning is pulled and stressed in the beams. The length of these segments meant that it was not practical to install the strand in bundles, therefore each strand was installed individually. A segment of the bridge contains 12 girders housing four ducts with each duct containing 13 to 15 strands. That means that a total of approximately 10.6 million feet of strand was installed. After the strand was installed, each duct was stressed on both ends to a jacking force of approximately 600 kips and the duct was grounded. With its first stage of post-tensioning complete, enough support is now in place to remove the strong backs and shift the shoring towers to the adjacent lanes. The nine-inch reinforced deck, comprised of two separate 62-foot structures, is then formed and poured. Once the deck is cured, the second stage post-tensioning is completed. In total, the bridge was divided into five post-tensioning segments ranging in length from 648 feet to 864 feet. Lastly, 
Slip-formed walls dividing northbound and southbound traffic and at the bridge edge are poured. The terrain traversed by the bridge structure poses a very challenging construction and erection sequence to Walsh's project team. 2,500 feet of the structure is over an environmentally sensitive wetland, home to the endangered Heinz Emerald Dragonfly, the Spotted Turtle, and the Blandings Turtle. This entire corridor was originally scheduled for construction 10 years ago and was shut down due to environmental constraints, specifically this project here uh, with the Heinz Emerald Dragonfly being an endangered species. The tollway had to go through mitigation process to show that the construction of this bridge would not hamper um, the species, endangered species that are out here. Uh, one of the mitigations that they did was to raise the height of the bridge approximately 10 to 15 feet because the original design, the deck height was the average flying height of the dragonfly. So the bridge was elevated so that the dragonfly could fly underneath of it. Construction through this area is limited to a temporary wetland disturbance of 8.77 acres and a permanent disturbance of 3.87 acres. When the bridge structure is complete, the majority of the stone placed to create a solid working surface during construction will be removed and restored to the original conditions. All that will remain is a 12-foot wide maintenance road. The bridge itself is uh, the second largest, longest bridge in the state of Illinois. The 612 post-tension girders are some of the largest in the United States, if not in the United States, definitely in Illinois, uh, varying in size from 90 feet in length up to 170 feet in length and uh, maxing out at 256,000 pounds. So the extremely large loads. Managing the 612 precast girders provided another significant project challenge. Each girder was precast off-site at plants in Blackstone, Illinois and Decatur, Indiana and was shipped to the site on specially designed trucks. Merely finding access for these trucks provided challenges as the smallest beam was 90 feet long with the largest nearly twice as long. After the beams arrived on site, each move of the cranes and trucks was fully planned as the site did not provide much room for these operations. Some of the difficult picks involved erection over the Des Plaines River, the Sanitary and Ship Canal, and BNSF and CN railroads. Overcoming these obstacles involved building an island in the Des Plaines River and mobilizing the Manitowoc 2250 to a barge for the Sanitary and Ship Canal picks. All of these cumbersome picks were completed successfully and without incident. To date, the Des Plaines River Bridge portion of the I-355 improvement has followed a 19-month project schedule through the 2006 and 2007 construction seasons. Aimed for concurrent completion with the entire extension to I-80 by November 6, 2007.